Welcome to Theology Thursday, an ecumenical space for students to discuss matters of faith and theology. I'm your host, Connor Grubbs. I am your co-host, Ryan Mock. And I am once again your co-co-host, Johnny Grubbs. Man, you sounded so defeated. Well, he's, I know, been, I w- he's been demoted. <clears throat> I yeah. went two, two episodes with Ryan gone, and I was able to be the co-host. Did you like it better with Ryan being gone? No, not really. Yeah. <laughs> he realized that he couldn't live up to my standards. No, I just I just like you, Ryan. You're a good kid. He, he, oh, guy. Can you scoot a little Man. closer to the mic? Yeah, yeah it's, sorry. It's, um, you know, you're can, good. Just can you project. hear me now? Going to the Ligonier Conference this weekend. Yeah. Okay, so or, or can we just go into the sub-points right now? Because I yeah. want to talk about all that. Yeah. So <clears throat> it has just been March Madness for me. Okay, we we started off. Hence, with, you not being on the last couple episodes. I know. Um, we started off with the. Uh, I, I think this was like February into March was was the university retreat. Yeah, that was lit. Yeah, that that was lit. And then after that, I went to a conference in Orlando with my church called Exponential. Exponential is a conference uh, for church planners. So it's a very cool conference. It took place at First Baptist Church of Orlando, um, which is where I'm going for this conference, the Ligonier Conference. Uh, it's it's cross denominational, so it wasn't like just a whole bunch of Associate Reformed Presbyterians. We were probably the only Presbyterians there. It was actually a largely Methodist uh, Wesleyan, uh, so that was that was different and exciting and slightly scary and intimidating. Um, but it was fun. I mean, the the place was packed. Uh, it's kind of interesting thinking about, you know, literally last week I was at First Baptist Church for Exponential, and then this week I'm going to Ligonier, both very different conferences. Uh, I mean, just think about the, the worship experience at Exponential. I mean, you got the, 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 the full course band with the guitars and the lights and, and the fog machines. Those are all fun and exciting. And then at Ligonier, we're going to be singing hymns, uh, all 4,000 of us, so... I'm going to Youth Pastor Summit next week in Orlando, and one of the days is also hosted at First Baptist Church. Oh, you are going to go? Did you find a buddy to go with you? I didn't find a buddy to go with me. I could be um, your buddy. If, if I don't have a buddy, I, I'll just probably come home at night and just not stay out there. Oh, if there I have a buddy, I'll just stay there. Could I be your buddy? I mean, listen, if you're free, if you can get off. What days are it? It's Monday and Tuesday. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I think we already talked about yeah. this. I can't do that. Yeah, no. It doesn't really work. But if it was like Thursday, Friday, I'd be your buddy. Yeah. Uh, so you guys got a lot of conferences going on. I got a lot of concerts going on. I've never been to a concert in my whole life. I mean, the closest thing, I've been to the Passion Conferences before. And I they, thought you they do a see Switchfoot. No, I've really? never seen Switchfoot before. And I, I, like ever since I was like 10, I've wanted to see Switchfoot live. Yeah, and they, I was in the same boat, and finally I did it. So I and I went. Was it good? A year ago. Was it good? Um, it was awesome. Yeah, okay. I've heard they're good live, and they're one of my all-time favorite bands. I'm going to see them. Then I'm going to see Tori Kelly next month. I cannot wait for that. Um, it's, I got the meet and greet experience too. Um, I'm a little, you know, sad. Yeah, I can't really shoot my shot anymore. She is a married woman, so I have to kind of, you know. Are you nervous? I'm uh, about meeting Tori Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then there's the Unashamed Forever tour. That's like all the rap, Christian rappers from Reach Records coming together. So I, yeah. like in the next, just in the span of a month, I'm not only am I going to my first concert, but I'm going to like three concerts. That's exciting. I'm excited. I, I should be it. I should be going to the Unashamed concert with you. Yeah, right? let's yeah. go together. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I think we're going as a, as a squad. Yeah. No, I haven't really. Squad! I don't know who is or isn't going yet, but I just know I'm going. Whether yeah. even if it's by myself, I'm going. Um, I want to lose your. Wow. Okay. Well, anyway, um, so uh, my sub point's very brief. Uh, we have been talking about in the past, like, the, the possibility of getting more into, like, videos and stuff. And that started this past week with Elevated Entertainment. Um, Elevation Church? No, Elevated Entertainment is... Is a YouTube channel. You sound so irritated. You get that a lot ever since you started. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. It's just it's just Ryan irritates me sometimes. Um, uh, I haven't gotten that. No. Um, in fact, Theology Thursday is kind of coming under the umbrella of Elevated Entertainment. No, I thought you mean Elevated Church is falling under the umbrella of Theology <laughs> no, Thursday. Stop. And and here's the thing. I, I I I thought about making it under the the umbrella of Theology Thursday because you know, but I feel like the name Theology Thursday is kind of limiting, um, because 
Thursday, and and if we're gonna be doing other podcasts maybe in the future or videos, if we're releasing content, I think it needs a, a name where it's like neutral, like so we just, can release just, it any day. It's of the just week. the name that's the problem. No, it's it's it, it, the, There's nothing wrong with the name. Then why can't it just be under the umbrella of Theology Thursday? No, it can't because. Thursday. See, so, so you're saying the problem is the name then? No, Elevated Entertainment I, I, I is a funny I feel like name. you guys should have had the meaning before. <laughs> Look, the fact is, I, it doesn't matter. I've already I made an executive this order. This is just dropped on me like right now with all of you folks out there listening. <laughs> um, that's why you're the co-host. <laughs> Look, it's gonna be okay. Did you know about this, Johnny? I didn't. I didn't. I all I knew. I just saw the things on on the social media. So I, you found out before me. Well, not really. I just I knew it was Elevated, doing another project. Okay. Okay. Can can I explain what Elevated Entertainment is? Are you starting a new church? Ele- Elevated <laughs> church. I am no. It 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 is <clears throat> kind of the umbrella where any creative content that we're working on is going to come out of. So that could include YouTube videos, teaching series, so I can make podcast. A puppet show. Yes, if you, if you want to make a puppet show, fine. I guess we could do that, but it's kind of that's any stuff elevated that, kids. Yeah, there you go. Any stuff we're producing, that's what it's going to come out. So um, right now with the YouTube channel, that is like kind of basically sub points in a video format where we talk about what's going on in pop culture from a Christian perspective. So we just released our first video this past week. We talked about Captain Marvel and feminism and the gospel all in the same video. It was really interesting. We were responding to an article that Desiring God released where the author was basically saying, I can't believe they made Captain Marvel. I wish we could get back to how Disney used to treat females in their movies. Little girls should only aspire to be like princesses. And I was like, what on earth? Uh, It was one of the weirdest articles I have ever read. This was by Desiring God, which I I like a lot of the stuff Desiring God puts out. And I like a lot of John Piper's stuff. I don't agree with all of it. There's, I can't say that about any author or scholar. Sorry, John Piper does not baptize um, babies. Yeah. Yeah, which is one of the things I do agree with him on. But, um, (laughs) what, what I did, this was a different author that wrote this article, and it was just bizarre because it was basically like he he was uncomfortable with the idea of a strong female superhero, um, and like girls having that to aspire to. Now, look, Brie Larson's a nutcase, and like there's a lot with the feminist movement that's completely immoral, but. The idea of strong, independent women who do not have to depend on men uh, for their identity or for help, that should be encouraged within the church. And it should be encouraged by Christians. Like, that concept by itself is not a bad thing. And I saw the movie and there was nothing, like, really liberal or amoral or anything about it. It really wasn't even that preachy when it came to, like, a feminist agenda. It wasn't preachy. It was just a fun sci-fi movie, and you happen to have a female in the lead role. So I thought the whole article was silly, because there's nothing wrong with Disney princesses, but like to say that this is damaging for little girls to see a strong female lead character is just hashtag toxic masculinity. <laughs> yeah, I agree. thought it was goofy. Um, so anyway, we're going to be transitioning into our main topic, and usually this is where the guest would come on, but... This week, we're back to our old school format. It's just me, Ryan, and Johnny sharing with you the, all the wisdom that we can. And, and, and Johnny is kind of the guest this week because I wanted to talk about the real St. Patrick. We have St. Patrick's Day coming up on Sunday. And Johnny did missions work in Ireland for a number of years. And uh, during that time, got to learn a little bit more about St. Patrick and kind of the history behind that. Uh, and so I've asked him to prepare some notes so we can talk about... Uh, who this guy was. So in the 5th century, there was uh, this idea for a milkshake called the Shamrock Shake. Oh, that's right. You're obsessed with the Shamrock Shake. (laughs) What? I'm just kidding. (laughs) St. Patrick invented the Shamrock Shake. Yes, that's what I'm telling you right now. No, I'm kidding. He did not. Um, Before I get started, what do you guys know about St. Patrick? Okay. Mm. You've been in the Shamrock Shake. (laughs) Okay, so this is what I know about, or this is what I think think I know. I could just be completely wrong about this. That's what I'm hoping, because okay, it, okay. it makes it more interesting. Okay, so St. <laughs> Patrick, he's a guy who was a missionary to Ireland mm-hmm. in, I'm guessing the 5th century. Right, that is okay, correct. Okay, so I was guessing right about <laughs> yeah, that. I gave you a little hint there. And he was 
I, he liked the color green. That's I think that's it. That's all I can give you. He's um, a missionary to Ireland. I, I, like Johnny. Johnny is St. Patrick reincarnated. No, no, no. That means um, that all of my fellow we, brothers we, were... We do not believe in reincarnation <laughs> and Theology Thursday. I, I, this is an ecumenical space. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. Yes. I, I guess yes. we, don't, we don't believe in that. Um, I, I think I remember hearing somewhere that his, his upbringing was pretty rough. He, he, he was... Well, yeah, because because of when he was taken into captivity. Okay, so we'll yeah, get into captivity. It. Yeah, right. I remember that he was taken into captivity. That's all I know. What, what's what's ironic is his initial upbringing wasn't that rough. Okay, so let's get into it. Patrick was a, a fifth century Romano British Christian, so he was actually brought up in a wealthy family. Um, in Britain, and yeah. In Roman Britain. Wait, so he wasn't Irish? He wasn't Irish. So that's but the, like on all the pictures of St. Patrick, he's got like the red hair. And he's the, like a leprechaun. It's really funny that they depict him that way. Um, they, I mean, obviously they come to love him in, in Ireland and stuff like that, but um, he probably looked more, well, Romano British than he did. Right, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, like Johnny. Uh, okay, so much of uh, what is known about St. Patrick comes from his own uh, writing. He actually wrote a memoir. Um, which is called, depending on your tradition, the Declaration or the Confession. Um, so allegedly that was written by Patrick himself. Um, okay. So his father was a deacon and his grandfather was a priest in the, in the Christian church. Uh, and so he was in a very wealthy situation. He was brought up. But at the age of 16, according to tradition, he was kidnapped by Irish raiders and taken as a slave to Gaelic Ireland. Uh-oh. Yeah, and that was where he spent six years there working as an indentured servant as a shepherd. But he wrote that it was really during this time um, that he really got close to um, God. Um, And this is what he wrote like in his memoir about that time in uh, Ireland as a shepherd. He said, The love of God and his fear grew in me more and more, as did the faith and my soul was risen so that in a single day, I have said as many as a hundred prayers, and in the night nearly the same. I prayed in the woods and on the mountain, even before dawn. Because of my spirituality, I felt no hurt from the snow or ice or rain. Now, that's a pretty big uh, statement right there, that he was just, he was so enamored and focused on God that he, the elements of the outdoors and stuff like that didn't really faze him, and he would just spend his time as a shepherd um, communing with God, much like David. A little shepherd boy. Yeah, that was him. Now, again, all this is written pretty much from one source, from him. So we have to trust. He could be lying to us. <laughs> right, we have <laughs> to trust. To make all this up. Or, or embellishing. I don't know that he'd have a motivation to do that. And that's why a lot of people say according to tradition and this kind of thing. So we could basically trust what he tells us. I think we can. Right, um, but he said that he believed that God told him to flee to the coast one day. Um, which, you know, on a normal day wouldn't have been a good idea because you reach the coast and... Then you'd be like, oh, where do I go? Ireland's an island, so Swam. you're stuck, you know. <laughs> so it was, it was never really a good idea to run, because where are you going to run in Ireland? Um, but that day, he really felt like God told him, and sure enough, when he got to the shore, there was a ship um, waiting for him. And so he um, he's like, hey, I'm, I'm Roman British. I, I, I should come with you guys. And they were all Roman British on the ship. They were like, yeah, you should. And so he went home, and he became a priest in his tradition at home, along with his family, and he uh, did like the rich people clergy thing, and he was like really comfortable, and had like a congregation, and this idea of Ireland and the way that he had understood it, you know, he was like a slave of them, you know, so he, he had seen all the roughest parts of Ireland, but he he knew that they could change, and, and this was really big, this was a really big deal, because um, in in Roman Britain, they thought that the almost like some of the early white settlers viewed Indians as lesser people. They looked at them and said they're they're savages and they're in, incapable. They're sort of less than human, so it's like there's not really a reason to share the gospel with them. Hmm. But um, Patrick, having spent a the period of his life there was like no these are people <laughs> you know they're a little bit brutish they're very pagan and they worship like druids and things like that but they they are still capable of um, coming to Christ and so this I- idea kind of nagged at him until finally he decided um, I'm going to go back 
to Ireland, and he spent the rest of his life there evangelizing. Any any questions so far? All right, so so question. Um, and maybe maybe you don't answer, maybe not. Um, I know that by this time English had not been developed at all, really, as as a language, from my understanding, or maybe maybe like old, really old English, which doesn't really sound like English today. But like, what what were they speaking back then? And were they were they speaking different languages from each other? For sure, um, and I don't I don't know exactly the the linguistic so like Gaelic aspects. Or something? It definitely was Gaelic in Ireland. That's a hundred percent sure. Whatever they were speaking in Roman Britain at the time, that's what they were speaking. So so he learned to speak Gaelic um, while he was a slave. Well, there. Yeah, the, the so he had a unique advantage, you know. And I think that that was probably not that it's excused, but that was probably the divide. That's like we have this language barrier. We have this um, cultural barrier. It's easier to sweep it under the rug. Just consider them savages. And, right. And it's fine. a lot easier to just, like, do it that way. Right. <laughs> but now he had actually garnered the ability to communicate with them. It was like, oh, you're just people who are confused, like a lot of people at home, you know, that yeah. knew Jesus. <laughs> We're <laughs> so. all confused. No, and I think, I think those kind of cultural differences, we may not say out loud that we think of other people as lesser than us or anything like that, but... We definitely, I think, have a harder time sharing the gospel with people that we view as different than us. We might either think it's not worth the time or, or, or subconsciously, we don't value them as much. So I think there's something to learn from that for sure. That's what I really took away from Patrick's story because of that. You, you're right. There is sort of this subversive thing that we all can fall into of viewing other cultures as less than or one of the biggest things we learned in our training uh, in the mission field was... Um, it's not wrong, it's just different. You know, there are certain things that, that cultures do differently that have no moral bearing on their life, but, like, we we easily would go to that culture and be like, this is not how you should have a meal, and this is not how you should do housing, and this is not how you... But um, that's not how it works. You know, we're supposed to be open to that. And so this was an incredibly novel idea at the time. Uh, yeah, I'll give, you, I'll give you one of the greatest cultural examples for me that was really hard to get past. They don't use toilet seats in Cuba. And that's not because they're poor. That's intentional. That's really... Why, no, like, why, why le, is that intentional? No, no, legit. Like, the place I went to, <clears throat> they had toilet seats, but just in case we asked for them, but they wouldn't put them on the toilets because it's just not, like, what they do. They just don't use... They think it's better to, like, squat and, like, actually hold your own body weight. Rather okay, than because you just gave me, like, the terrible mental image of them actually sitting on the rim. No, no, they don't think you should actually yeah, sit. Because that'd be and, disgusting. And, and for us, like, uh, 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 you know, you sit down on the toilet and it's like a great time to relax and all that. It's not like that. You're going throughout the day and you just kind of got to squat and get it out and keep going. <laughs> you know what that reminds this me of? This is a whole little turn here. I don't know if this is this is true in Cuba. It could be. And this has nothing really to do with culture. It's just kind of the way it was. When we went poop, you weren't allowed to flush the toilet paper down the Where? drain. You had when? to... In Belize, when I was oh, in Belize, yeah, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't clarify yeah, there's, that. There's in context. There. <laughs> in, in Belize, when I went to Belize, when you pooped, yeah, and you wiped your butt, you couldn't just like throw it down the toilet. You had to throw it in the trash can oh. because the pipes weren't like suitable for that. Mm. They're like old and small. So anyway, like so the, yeah, hardest so culture, the, the hardest culture, the hardest cultural barriers, uh, barriers uh, for me and Ryan to get past. Was the poop? You, you have the to do with the toilet. bathroom, <laughs> but. It, we're di distracting from like the real point here, which is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a better example. I mean, they probably had worse. Yeah, let's back let's then. go with a real example. A, a better example apologize. would be a lot of my friends uh, and what you would call basically cultures can be generally divided, and then there are subcultures within those into hot culture climates and cold culture climates, and that doesn't have to be actually. Sometimes it, it does correlate to the actual temperature of the place. Um, for instance, like a lot of Latin America places are considered hot culture climates. Um, but they um, they don't have a very big concept of time, you know. So in, in a lot of places, um, this is true in Africa as well, if a wedding's at 3 o'clock, that's when you start getting ready. And then maybe by 6 o'clock you have the wedding, maybe, you know. And so there's things like that where you go to yeah. certain places and it's easy for coming from a different context to be like, that's stupid, you know, that that's wrong. Right. You know, <laughs> but... Um, they would come here and, and say the same thing if they were mean. Yeah, you know? <laughs> they, would, they would be wrong. <laughs> no, I not stupid. stupid. <laughs> so anyway, so anyway, so so 
Patrick realized that this is really important and that these people matter. And so, according to his memoir, he spent many years evangelizing in, um, in Ireland. And he, according to him, again, don't know if he's embellishing, I believe it's probably true, um, that he converted thousands. Patrick's um, efforts against the Druids, uh, which were like spiritual cultic leaders. They were pagans. Yeah, they were pagans. Um, he was like Johnny. He, he, he kind of um, helped to drive them out or at least say, hey, if these guys are free to practice Christianity and you don't need to try to dissuade them, um, that whole idea of driving out um, led to myths about him. Are you guys familiar with any of the myths surrounding St. Patrick? He uh, was a leprechaun. He found the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> okay, no. Uh, he liked to drink. No. He liked potatoes. Dude, this is like one of those common myths. Well, I, I, I'll give you this. I didn't hear it until I went to Ireland. But apparently there's a myth in Ireland that the reason there are no snakes in Ireland is because oh, Patrick yes, drove them out. I, I he heard, I've heard that okay. before. Yeah. I, because when you, asked, when you asked me if I knew anything about St. Patrick... There's something in the back of my head about snakes, but I yeah, couldn't my, make the connection. Mine my, my, my was there too, but what, um, uh, d is it true? No, it's now. Uh, were there ever snakes in it was out. No, there weren't. That's the thing. It became more of a, it was supposed to be an allegory, and then it became like a myth instead. An allegory for what? For driving out the druids. Oh, yeah, yeah. there you go. Oh, I get they it. They weren't actually snakes. Yeah. The snakes. Yeah. Uh, get it? Clever. Um, I think he actually drove out the snakes too, though. There were he probably like one snake never that he snakes. How do you know that? The Are only you, snake you in there. I, I know that uh, <laughs> just the climate it would not be conducive to any type of snake. See, you just lack faith. Now you're just being discriminatory. <laughs> you lack faith in Jesus. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, are there other legends? Um, this one, we're more sure that it is true, but it, it's a little bit more on the fence because he never said it in his memoir, but there's other writings of in Gaelic of people there um, okay. that indicate that he did use the shamrock, which you, I'm sure you've heard, uh, to use the shamrock to, to make a milkshake. <laughs> to make some shampoo. No, <laughs> milkshake. To, um, <laughs> no, to share the gospel, to, to talk about the Trinity. That's right, yeah, from the, right. the four, okay. the four yeah, clovers. Yeah, yeah well, but Ruth's most... Good luck. Yeah, that's good luck. And Jesus. But most clovers are three leaf. That's right. why the four leaf is so special. I found a four leaf clover before. Okay. Well, and I put it on my windowsill, and it just kind of shriveled up and died. And I was you're like, say, oh, well, this isn't that lucky. Yeah, I, I <laughs> the pagans got it wrong. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, no, but he would take the, the regular three-leaf clover and explain the Holy Trinity. You know, it's one clover, but it has three distinct parts. You know, no analogy is perfect for There's the There's probably Trinity. some heresy in there. <laughs> you know, it's like any Trinity analogy. Right, exactly. Um so, but that story actually appears later in later writing. So, um, we don't so know. So he became a heretic later in life. Uh, tradition holds that he died on the seventeenth of March, which is oh, that's coming up. When that's when we sing, celebrate St. Patty's Day. I oh, believe. what a coincidence! <laughs> oh, okay. uh, um, I wonder if they did that intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> You're going down, punk. He was buried at Down Patrick, <clears throat> so um, that's still there to this day. And over the following centuries, of course, many legends grew up around him. But his breastplate, um, of which the, in the Catholic tradition they have this little uh, breastplates for the saints. But <clears throat> apparently, um, the poem that goes on the breastplate was Patrick's poem of faith and trust in God, and it appears in his memoir. And it, it uh, you actually sang this at my wedding. Yeah, I did, didn't I? It what? says. Christ, there was a yeah, musical version of it. Um, Christ be within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me. Christ to win me, Christ to comfort me and restore me. Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ inquired, Christ in danger, Christ in the hearts of all that love me, Christ in the mouth of every friend and stranger. And this was a little bit paraphrased, and we had you sing it with the pronoun us, because we wanted our marriage yeah. to be Christ within us, you know, yeah. Christ in the heart of every person that looks at us at our marriage. So cheesy. So, yeah. um, it's, it was sincere, man. Um, and of course this prayer meant a lot to me because of my, um, time in Ireland and my, um, affection for St. Patrick's ministry. Um, uh, and so that's kind of the summation of his work. I would add the irony is that today 
<clears throat> the man that it's based on spent his whole life fighting secularism within Ireland at his of uh, you know the secularism of his time, and on St. Patrick's Day, um, the Catholic Church and the Church of Ireland says, "Oh, you get a Lent pass." <laughs> And anything you're observing for Lent, you don't have to observe on St. Patrick's Day. Oh, that's nice. And that leads to oh, debauchery. Oh, is that why people get so drunk? Yeah, that's Lent. why oh. it's such a big thing because it's like, oh, we, you know, especially people who are abstaining from alcohol, which is very common. Um, it, it's kind of how they um, justify their alcoholism yeah, during the gotta, year well, because <laughs> it's like, I can stop drinking for 40 days of the year. Yeah. I'm always wondering that, like, yeah. why alcohol was associated with St. Patrick's Day, because I feel like St. Patrick was not an alcoholic. Right. It's a, it's associated, it's become associated with that because of the Linton restriction being lifted on that day. Yeah. Another thing I so learned you gotta by being there. you got to make up for the whole, you got to drink enough for the whole 40 days. Exactly. And that's one, one day. That, yeah. that, and that's literally what people say. <laughs> got wow. 40 days of drinking to do today. I, I, and, I feel uh, like, I feel like St. Patrick <laughs> wouldn't be very proud of that. They set know? their alarm. <laughs> All right, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, it, and Ryan's point is exactly how we sort of approach outreaches um, on St. Patrick's Day, or did when I was part of um, the ministry, and they still do to this day. Is it's like, why why do we celebrate this? And asking them the question and being like, like this is your country, this is your dude, you know, that you celebrate. Um, how in the world did it you know come to this? And so we had several outreaches. One. I have to say, it's not 100% bad. I can't just be like, oh, yeah, the whole country of Ireland is, you know, drunk. Or, that's not fair. It is a it is a rampant problem there. But um, they also have family parades. And so um, the outreaches that we did on St. Patrick's Day was in the morning. We would we would march in this parade, and we would have our bus, which we use as a ministry center. But it also has, um, you know, uh, the verse on the side that says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Um, and we would go through the parade and we would have um, things to give out about our organization and programs that we were doing. Um, and that was a way to minister. Um, so there was a family aspect to it as well for those who had kids. Um, but then at night, we would, well, not at night, we'd wait until later on, but closer to the time that people would come out of the pubs and give up for the night, we would have coffee. And a lot of them weren't done partying, but they were done drinking. And they would come and drink coffee to sober up. And it'd be like by 6 a.m. we were talking about St. Patrick's Day and like giving the Tylenol and like being like, hey, why did you, why did you get drunk? Why did you go on a bender last night? You know, right. and what's the point of this? And so it was, it was really interesting. We had, you know, really big conversations with with people. So that's awesome. I that's love dope. that. That's really dope. That's 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 mega dope <laughs> lit fam. Um, so so here's my question for you since you did do outreach there for a while and uh, and you, I think you kind of touched on it by explaining that outreach specifically but how would you say um, St. Patrick's legacy and work has impacted Ireland um, in, a, in maybe a positive way that's still lasting well I think the sad thing is for the most part <laughs> it hasn't mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know um, because now it's forgotten but um, at the same time I don't think that there would the lasting way is I don't know that, I mean, God would have done something to reach Ireland, but he chose to use St. Patrick, and Christianity wouldn't be there at all without him. So I guess there is that huge lasting thing that there wouldn't be uh, Christianity in Ireland unless somebody brought it there. At the time, they were an unreached people, you know? Right. And so they he brought on the first generation of Irish Christians, and now there is a small, very small, but still there's a remnant today of about 1% of the population of Ireland um, is, you know, professing. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, and I mean, it's, it's, it makes me glad that we did this episode because if there's all these misconceptions about who the real St. Patrick was and, and all this misunderstanding about why the holiday even exists in Ireland, right. then how much more here right. would that be true? Um, so I think it's good that we ha had a chance to discuss I think so too, and and um, you know if the Shamrock Shakes run out at McDonald's, Wawa has their version of it. So that's true. <laughs> Just so you guys know, yeah, you want to celebrate the Holy Trinity, um, the Shamrock Shake. Why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, 
As always, guys, thank you for joining us uh, for another episode of Theology Thursday. You can uh, make sure to uh, follow us on all our social media so you can keep up uh, with what we're doing. And uh, we hope to have you join us again next week. As always, thank you for listening to Theology Thursday. You can find old episodes on iTunes, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, YouTube, and Podbean. You can send questions that you want us to answer on the show to theologythursdaypodcast at gmail.com, and you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook. We hope to have you back next Thursday.